In this chapter, we are going to study brakes and dynamometers and outwardly these two categories of devices seem very different. One is used for stopping a moving machine part while the other is used for measuring either force or power. But sometimes the principles used in uh, achieving these goals are quite parallel and therefore we will be studying them in comparison with each other. So we are going to start with our first and simple device, say a block brake, where you have a block of either wood or rubber if it is a light duty application or it could be something harder like cast steel in case there is a heavy duty application. This is the typical configuration where you have a drum over here which is connected to the machine part which is rotating and which needs to be stopped. Uh, making contact with it is this uh, shoe or the block mounted on this lever and the lever is free to pivot about a fixed point. Now there are several possible arrangements of uh, this pivot. It could be on the other side of the shoe as well. Uh, we are just going to look at one simple arrangement or one possible arrangement. And then effort will be applied at one end of the lever so that the block can be pressed against this rotating drum. Next, we are going to analyze this brake and for that we'll make a schematic diagram of this. So here is our drum. Making contact with that is the block. Then it is mounted on this particular lever which is free to pivot about this fixed point O here. And then there is a effort E applied at this point. Now once we apply this effort E, this end of the lever will try to come down and the shoe will get pressed on the drum. So naturally there is going to be a normal reaction developed between the two. So this is how it will act on uh, the block. When the drum is not rotating, it is stationary. Uh, these are all the forces that you have. But once it starts rotating in say clockwise direction like this, in that case a frictional force will also be developed in the same direction as the rotation of the drum. Next, let us consider the equilibrium of this lever along with this shoe. As you can see, it is acted upon by uh, three external agencies, the drum, which gives us normal reaction and frictional force, known in direction but not in magnitude. Then there is this effort applied by the human operator, completely known. But the worst force here is coming from the fixed pivot. Except for the point of application, we don't know anything about it. So I am going to start with moment equation taken about O because that will keep this worst force out of our analysis. For that, we are going to need some dimensions. Here they are. Uh, all distances are measured from O. The distance of effort is E, distance of load or normal reaction is L, and the distance of friction is F. So this is the equation we are starting with. Sum of moments about O is zero, and that is going to give us this. So on one side, there is moment caused by this effort. On the other side, there is a clockwise moment caused by the normal reaction and the frictional force. And then we can simplify this to get the effort, which is given by this expression. Interestingly, if we reverse the direction of rotation, say from clockwise, if we make it counterclockwise, then even the direction of the frictional force is going to switch. And then we get this expression for the effort. Interestingly, if you compare these two expressions, you will see in one case the friction is adding to the effort required, but in this case the friction is reducing. It is negative, having a negative sign, so it is reducing the effort required. So in this case, the friction is kind of helping in the braking process. And such kind of brakes are called as self-energized brakes. And you can even consider the extreme case where this L, this distance here, uh, is exactly balanced by this product mu into f and this whole bracket would become zero and that that means we would need zero effort for applying the force. It sounds sort of unusual or improbable but what happens is just with a little push you can make this uh, shoe make a contact and once it has made a contact you don't have to apply the effort anymore. It just locks by itself. And this is called as a self-locking brake. 